Imagine your home running completely on its own power. The grid goes out, but your lights stay on, your EV keeps charging, your AC hums quietly in the background, and your phone's charging to 100%. That is not sci-fi anymore. That's what EcoFlow is promising with the new Delta Pro Ultra X, their most powerful home energy system yet. With up to 36 kilowatts of output, 180 kilowatt hours of storage, and a new Smart Home Panel 3 that can manage your entire home, this thing is trying to take on the Tesla Powerwall head on and to do it in a modular DIY friendly way. I also do want to thank EcoFlow for teaming up with me on this video and for sending this system out for me to play with. Now, today I'm going to be diving deep into what this thing is really capable of and who it makes sense for. So let's start out by talking about all of the features with these devices. The Delta Pro Ultra X delivers 12 kilowatts of continuous AC output per inverter, and you can parallel up to three units for a total of 36 kilowatts of continuous output. Battery capacity starts at six kilowatts per unit and can be expanded all the way up to 180 kilowatt hours. That's a total of 30 plug-in batteries across three different inverters. The system outputs 120 and 240 volt split phase, so you can power large appliances like HVAC systems, well pumps, and EV charging. Now the Smart Home Panel 3 supports up to 32 household circuits and a 200 amp connection, letting it function as a true home integration hub rather than a limited backup switch. Now, supported charging methods include grid charging, solar PV input, and gas generator backups, giving you a lot of flexibility in how you refill these batteries. The system is designed for fast automatic UPS switchover during an outage. We're seeing 10 milliseconds for the standalone unit itself and less than 20 milliseconds when you connect it to that smart home panel three. And the best part is this system is also built for scalability. You can start with just the one inverter and two batteries and then add more batteries as your budget grows. You can put up to 10 batteries per inverter. And then with three inverters, that is going to be 30 batteries in total. What this means in practice is that you can back up your entire home, not just the fridge and a few outlets, if you size it correctly. The upper end configuration can run an average US home several days. So let's say that your home uses about 30 kilowatt hours a day. If you max out a system at 180 kilowatt hour setup, you're able to power your entire home for six days, assuming you don't have solar panels to extend that time. All right, so let's take a look at the hardware of everything that we installed from EcoFlow. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna do the peel on camera. That was a lot louder than I expected. But here is our smart home panel three. Down here, we have got the inverter. So let me show you guys this really quick. I'm gonna pull out the inverter, it is on wheels. So we've got the inverter here on top. You can see if we push on the battery, we can see all of the different inputs here. So right now it is outputting roughly about 1,000 to 1,100 output. And right now it is powering up the house. So we are on our scheduled output. So it's actually running off the batteries right now. This is pretty cool that we're doing this right now. So we've got nothing coming in because we are in peak hours. So nothing coming in from the grid, everything going out, powering the house right now. And that is what we are using. We're at 87%. Down here for the inputs, we have got 120 volt. This is dual AC coming in. We have got a 120 volt and a 240 volt 30 amp plug right here. And then we have got the same thing, our 50 amp. So this is gonna be our NEMA 1450 right here that you can use to plug in maybe a car or something like that if you want to run it off the batteries. Now turning it on the side, we have a couple more things down here. We have got our connection to our inlet over back here for the panel. So this is what is running everything off the battery right here. We've got another battery port right here. And the cool thing about these is you can slide them in, get them out of the way if you are using it, which I have done with both of these, but this guy, we're gonna keep that plugged in. We have got our battery connectors right here. And then with the secondary down here, we're connecting it here. So we've got, and you can stack them down there for as many as you want. We can do 10 batteries per inverter. You can also lock these in place. So if you don't want kids messing with them, taking them off, you can do that. Over here on the side, we have got our PV inputs. So this panel comes off for our PV. This is gonna be for our solar panel inputs coming in right here. We have got a total of four connectors. So looking on the side here, we've got 
PV2 plus and minus, PV1 plus and minus. Now with this setup right here and something that I wanna show you guys, in this box right here, we have got our PV switch to turn everything on and off. So if you are going to be connecting solar panels to this, this is what is going to be connecting in right here and then your solar is going to be going into this on off box. So you have that mountain on your wall, solar will come into the top and connect to everything here in the box. So that way you do have a physical on off breaker switch right there. If you take a look at the rest of this, we have got a lot of venting all around. So we have venting up here on the top. Make sure this thing is cool. You also don't want to have anything around it. So make sure you have lots of venting around. Don't cover this thing. Don't put it in a spot that is going to cause it to overheat. It is very easy to move around is something that I love. This inverter will lift off and then all the batteries. The batteries are very heavy. So get a second person when you're putting these batteries on, all set on top of each other and stack up. This runs over to our inlet right here. So we have got three different inlets. This is essentially what they look like. We've got rubber that just pops right off. You can physically push the button right here to turn them on and off. I don't have anything plugged into this one right now, but if I wanted to turn this off, I would hit that button right there to turn it off. We see that grid is active, so we are able to get power from the grid. We have an emergency stop button right here. So push that button, it's gonna pause the system. Go ahead and hit it again to resume. Taking a look at the actual panel itself, this thing is beautiful. It is huge, but that is because you can put 32 circuits in here absolutely massive, even bigger than my circuit main coming into the house right there. I've only got eight for testing, so we're just testing out eight of my circuits right here, and that is what is being powered up, but that is kind of all the essentials in the house. Now, next thing that I wanted to talk about is we have got the EcoFlow EV charger right here. Right now we do have it plugged into just a NEMA 1450 plug down here, so that is what is running. We take this off, this is another plug that will allow me to connect it out of here and actually plug this into one of the AC outlets. So that way the EV charging can go in and be used by an outlet and monitored through there. That is something that is going to be coming a little bit later in for more updates. But as of right now, we are not going to be using that and it's just going off a normal NEMA 1450 plug. This allows me to use this. We've got an extra long cable that's able to get through and then up top here, we've got our Tesla adapter. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that ring off. This is going to allow me to lift this up and we can pull off our Tesla adapter right here. So this is normally what it comes and looks like. And then that's going to allow you to plug this in here so you can kind of store it up and out of the way. But because I have a Tesla, I need the Tesla outlet. So that is going to log into here lock that in but now that the tesla uh, adapter is on there it's not going to fit in there anymore so unfortunately that's not going to work actually i use this about once a week to charge up the tesla and it works fantastic you can set up schedules with this too so i know the tesla already has a schedule where i can say don't charge yourself during peak hours you can actually program into this one too if you want to do that but um, this does connect to the app and you can monitor everything through there. Okay, so who is this system for and when does it actually make sense to invest in it? Well, I would say that the ideal user is going to be homeowners that are in areas with frequent power outages. That may be due to wildfires, hurricanes, winter storms, just grid instability. Also, maybe somebody who just wants energy independence with solar panels plus batteries plus grid integration. Another option would be households with high power appliances or EVs who want backup for their whole home, not just a few critical loads. And then lastly, people who are just looking for modular scalability where you can start small and then as your budget grows, scale with it and just buy more batteries. So realistic expectations for this system is going to be a single 12 kilowatt hour setup could cover the essential loads. We're talking lights, fridges, internet for around half a day to a day, depending on your usage. Expand that to maybe a 36 hour kilowatt hour to maybe 48 hours at most could comfortably run most 
households overnight. Now, if you wanna go with the full 180 kilowatt hour configuration, could potentially run an average home that's about 2,500 square feet for about five to six days, like we talked about earlier, assuming that moderate energy use and no HVAC system, because I can tell you that AC unit can really suck the power out of the system. Now with the Smart Home Panel 3, it lets you select which circuits you wanna keep active, which is key if you are not going for the full capacity. Okay, now we're gonna dive into some of the features with the app. So we've got the app loaded up here. You can see we are on the Smart Home Panel 3. So up here at the top, it gives temperature and it also gives like solar generation, consumption, earning price. Unfortunately, I don't have solar plugged in, so those numbers aren't going to populate for me. Right below that, we have got the Smart Home Panel 3, which is what we're looking at right here with all of the settings. Right next to that though, you can see where it says other devices. If I click on other devices, it's going to bring up my other EcoFlow devices that we have set up. And you know what? Let's go ahead and take a look right now at the EV charger. So if I click on my EV charger, we can see right now that it is charging my Tesla that is downstairs. We can see the speed that it is going or the power rate that it has. So we've got 9.59 kilowatts being put into there at 40 amps. I gotta say, this thing is impressive and using that NEMA 1450 plug really powers this thing up and gets it fully charged fast. And then you can see at the bottom where it says schedule task, because I have set it up between midnight and 4 p.m. because it's the same rate for me no matter what the time is it can charge the Tesla. So if I plug it in, it's automatically going to charge in that time frame right there. And then essentially it blocks out 4 p.m. to 9 p.m., which is my peak time. I don't want to charge during that time. So I'm gonna go ahead and back out of there. We can see the other devices that I have. I'm gonna click back on Smart Home Panel 3 and we can take a look at the home that it shows here right here. So up in the top left corner, right above the house, it says grid. So this is the power that is coming in from the grid. Over to the right of that, we can see home, which is what the house is using. And then below there, we see the battery. So battery is at 97%. Things are flowing through the grid and going into there. We can see the 97% right there. Now, once this switches over to battery backup, that is going to change where the grid is going to say zero and the number that we see is going to pull from the house to the grid. So right now it's like at 7, 37, 40, that will show power being drained from the battery, going to the grid, and then our timing here, where it says 16 hours of battery time remaining, that will adjust accordingly, depending on the power we use, to tell us how much time we have left before that battery is fully drained. Because how I have my setup is that I have it set up every single day to run off of the battery between my peak hours. So between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m., Every single day, the circuits that I have backed up are going to run off of the battery. So that way I'm not using and paying for those higher prices on everything that is in there. This saves me every single day, so I'm not spending that extra on peak hours. And then when peak hours turn off, the batteries will charge themselves back up. Now, the perfect situation with this is to have solar. So the solar would charge this battery up, so that way it saves me even more money. But fortunately, I don't have solar, so we're not using that right now. Take a look below that. You can see the schedule that I have. So the yellow icon right here is showing the schedule that it is doing its fully charged. That is going to be every single day. If I click on that, you can see current status. Below this, we have got some different options. So we have got this activate option that is going to be a solar forecast. This is something that's actually new to EcoFlow and something that you can sign up for a free trial right now to test it out. I'm gonna close out of there. We can see our current circuits. So if I look at my circuits right here, I have each one of them named and it's showing the power consumption that is being used by each one. So that way you can kind of keep track and maybe even fine tune your power a little bit. I actually did that. I went through and I saw which ones were using the most power and kind of went through and found out what was using those power and either unplug them, turn them off, put them on smart plugs just to help save some extra power right there. So that was actually really helpful. Energy independence, if I click onto this, this kind of shows where my energy is being used. If we take a look down here at the bottom, roughly 20% of my daily power usage is being used off of the batteries. The remaining 80% is just being pulled from the grid. So that's something that's cool you can keep track of on there. I'm gonna back out of here, we can take a look at our consumption. So we've got our daily consumption here. You can take a look at weekly or monthly consumption. Let's go back to our daytime and then it's kind of reflecting right here. So we can see right now, 0% battery use today because it hasn't used it. If I go back to yesterday, 26% of my usage yesterday was from 
our battery right there. So let's back out of there. We can see where it has battery and earnings. Unfortunately, it's not showing earnings for me. Going back up here, we have a few different tabs. So if I tab over right here, it's going to show me the different circuits. So from here, you can set the names, see the power usage. So let's click here on the office. I'm gonna click on today's usage show me a bunch of different stats and charts in there. So it's kind of cool if you want to dig into that stuff. Got two different views. If you want to do that, you can turn each circuit on and off through the app individually too. Tabbing over, we can see this is where we're going to be controlling the AC ports on the inlet down on our power grid that's down in the garage. So we've got the three different inlets. Here is where they are set up. If I click on this inlet right here, I can turn it on and off from the app. And we also have the charge now button if I want to go ahead and get this thing topped up and charged up. Next to that, we have got our different settings. So we've got device information, home setting right here. We've got our grid setting. So you can go ahead and set up your grid. We have got split phase setting. That is something I don't have set up. And let's see, we've got SPD setting. That is also something that I don't have set up. But if you guys wanna know more about that, you can go back and pause it right there. System device setting right here. So we have got what we want our battery to charge up to. I've got mine set for 4,000 watts. So when it is charging up my batteries, that's the amount of power that it is using. We've got our generator. So I don't have a generator plugged in. And then for EV charging, we do have the 40 amp set up there that we saw just a minute ago. Smart circuit settings. Nothing set up there for a schedule because you can schedule your circuits to turn on and off if you don't want to use them during a certain time. Operation mode. So we've got a couple of different modes right here for our operation. I have got my scheduled one set up, but you can do AI mode and self-powered. Let's see here, we have also got energy allocation. So you can set up your different priorities right here for your energy. And then we have got backup power settings. So here's something that's pretty cool. I have got my circuit priorities here at the bottom. If I click on that, I can set up certain circuits to turn off when the battery gets to a certain level. So right now we have got 28 of the 30 to circuits. Obviously I'm not using all of those. I'm only using eight of mine, but if I wanted to say for like nice to have things. So when the battery hits 50%, it's going to turn off these three circuits. So that would be my office, the downstairs bathroom and the garage. Those would turn off once the battery hits 50% to save on power. And then we've got non-priority circuits. That's going to be something like the kid's bedroom. The kid's bedroom does not need a light. So if the power goes out in an emergency, and we're just relying on battery backups, the kids' room circuit is not going to work. That one's going to turn off. But you can go ahead and kind of mess around with these and adjust them how you want. Maybe you need to change things down the road or play around with these. You can do that. All right, I think that is pretty much it. Down here, you can do firmware updates, general information. So those are kind of the cool things that we can see here in the app. And I really like being able to do this once it's connected to Wi-Fi and the internet from essentially anywhere I am. Okay, so here's my takeaway. If you are looking for a true home backup system, not a portable power station, not a quick fix, the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra X is one of the most capable turnkey options right now. Now, some of the things it is getting right, it's got a massive 12 to 36 kilowatt power output with expandable batteries of up to 180 kilowatt hours. That is huge. We have 200 amp smart home panel three that enables real whole home integration. We've got a modular design that lets you start small and scale over time and smart features like storm guard, load management and solar optimization to add real day to day value. Now, if you are on the fence about this system, here are some things that you might want to be cautious about. It is a premium system. Expect a serious investment and for professionals to come install it. Now, once you get the system up, depending on your power needs, expanding to a whole home capacity could double or triple the initial cost with all the additional batteries you may need to add into that. Also, utility incentives or tax credits for battery storage can offset the cost, but eligibility varies per state, so do your homework first. Bottom line, EcoFlow is pushing closer than ever to the Tesla Powerwall territory. But with DIY-friendly modularity and a more approachable app ecosystem, if you're ready to invest in long-term backup and solar integration, this is worth a serious look. And if you need just a short-term backup for essentials, 
You can still start small with one inverter and two batteries and then expand later from there. If you guys wanna know more about this system, I will have links in the description below for everything that you need. If a system like this seems too overwhelming and maybe more than you need, be sure to check out this video here from EcoFlow on some of their smaller units. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. As always, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you guys in the next video.